Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to another video on the channel. In this video, I want to talk about a particular regret I have when purchasing this Mac Mini M4. Uh, a few days ago, I made a video about my uh, my nine month review on this Mac Mini M4, and I did touch on this point, but I wanted to make this video to emphasize further on this point so that you guys don't make the same mistake. Hey guys, I'm Jay and welcome to another video on the channel. So in my nine month review, I was very complimentary about the M4 Mac Mini and I stand by that. It's uh, it's an excellent computer uh, and you know, it has everything you ask for in a computer. It's tiny, um, it's efficient, it's powerful, it's reliable. Um, it has everything you need really, everything you ask for in a computer, it has it. But if you're thinking to purchase one, and that goes, this goes for any Mac really, if you're going to buy a Mac Mini, if you're going to buy a MacBook Air, MacBook Pro, even a Mac Studio, you're going to want to spec it correctly. But if you do over spec it, you end up with a device which is just way too powerful and you end up wasting a lot of money uh, and, and not being able to utilize that, that power that you have. And you know, on the other side, if you under spec it, you end up with a device which is going to cause you problems. And no, I haven't made a massive mistake in the purchasing of this M4 Mac Mini. But it's just something in hindsight, uh, if, if I had known this, it would have made for a more smoother workflow. Okay, before I get into what I, what I regret about purchasing this Mac Mini, let me tell you what I got right when purchasing this Mac, Mac Mini because I, you know, there, there are plenty of things um, which I did get right. So the first thing is the M4 chip. Uh, the M4 chip is is a brilliant uh, chip and, and for my needs it's more than enough. Um, I was contemplating between purchasing this or the M4 Pro Mac Mini at the time and I have tried the M4 Pro Mac Mini, I have tried also the, the M4 Max, Mac Studio and I can say honestly that for my workflow this is plenty. This is more than enough, you know, this, uh, this tiny device here with the M4 chip in it which is incredibly powerful and efficient. Is, is more than enough for my workflow. Uh, it handles video editing really, really well uh, in DaVinci Resolve. Um, it handles obviously the the normal stuff, the web browsing, the research, um, you know, the, the emails and, and the Word documents and things like that, absolutely fine. Um, so for me, uh, the M4 chip is more than powerful enough and I didn't feel like that extra money spent on the M4 Pro Mac Mini uh, or the Mac Studio was justified in any way because I did purchase them and I ret actually returned them because I felt like that extra money because the M4 Pro Mac Mini is is double more than double the price of this base model uh, M4 Mac Mini and the Mac Studio is actually triple the price of this M4 Mac Mini and I felt like for that extra cost I wasn't actually getting double or triple the performance so for me I felt like the M4 chip is enough and I still feel that way nine months later I don't regret the M4 chip it's incredibly as I mentioned powerful and efficient and this 10 core CPU 10 core GPU M4 Mac Mini um, is, is plenty for my needs so that's one thing I got right the M4 chip Another thing which I believe I got right when purchasing this M4 Mac Mini is the actual the unified memory. So 16 gigabytes of unified memory uh, for me uh, and my workflow is more than enough. And I think for most people it will be more than enough as well. I think if I had spec'd it up to 24 gigabytes, I don't really, yeah, I wouldn't really be using that unified memory. And I think I wouldn't particularly need it. I mean, for future proofing. Possibly you can argue that it's good to have 24 gigabytes, but we haven't seen what the future holds and, and we can only really purchase our Macs based on what we need currently. Uh, I know things are in increasing and things are becoming more intensive, more programs are becoming more uh, workload intensive, but for now, and I, I believe for the next couple of years, I believe 16 gigabytes of memory is is more than enough. Um, and for, yeah, for my workflow, it has been absolutely fine. I can open uh, my video editing software. I can edit a video in DaVinci Resolve. I can also open several tabs uh, in Safari and play some music at the same time if I wanted to uh, with no problems and, and not even using the swap memory uh, on the CPU. So 16 gigabytes is, is it's pretty much enough. I think for most people, I think it should be it should be more than enough. Obviously, if you are opening loads of intense applications at the same time, then you may want to spec it up. But for me personally, 16 gigabytes is absolutely fine for me. So guys, now coming to the storage, and this is where I feel I do feel some some regret in the purchasing of this uh, Mac Mini, and. Yeah, it's not a big mistake. Listen, it's not a big mistake. Uh, I'm, I'm still making it work and my for my workflow, I'm, I am making it work. It is doing the job um, at the moment. But, you know, I, I would have saved some headache if I had spec'd it up a little bit. Um, you know, 
when it comes to storage i got the the model with 256 gigabytes of storage and that is the the base model and uh, at that point in time i was thinking i'd, I'd use an external ssd it's that one there the samsung t7 shield uh, external ssd and my my way of thinking was that i would purchase this mac mini with the base storage i don't want to give any more money to apple than i have to and i don't want to waste money on uh on storage internal storage in the in my mac mini and i would use an external ssd and that's what i've been doing i've been keeping this pretty much plugged into my mac mini all the time and i've been moving files over from the mac mini to the external ssd uh, as and when i need to um my my regret here is that if i had a little bit more storage even 512 gigabytes of storage i wouldn't have to move those files over uh, as frequent as i have to do now because if if I look at my Mac Mini, I'm actually running out of storage pretty fast making these videos on the channel. So, uh, and also, if you look at how much space macOS takes up and programs uh, themselves take up, uh, macOS takes up about 20 gigabytes of storage in itself. And then, if you add in the the programs on top of that, that's about 50. Uh, that's about 50 gigabytes of storage right there. So that only leaves you with about 200 gigabytes of storage for your files. And I found that that storage is is filling up pretty fast for me and you know every now and then I do have to move files over from my Mac mini to an external SSD um, but if I feel like if I had spec'd it up to 512 gigabytes because I still believe in not giving too much money uh, spending too much money on internal storage I still believe we shouldn't be wasting money on that because it's like $200 per upgrade but if I had at least upgraded it to 512 gigabytes of storage, I would have had that little bit of headroom, a little bit of wiggle room there to actually, you know, create more freely and just make my videos without having to think about, oh, am I going to run out of storage soon? Uh, I better move some files over. It just gives you that creative freedom to just make the videos you want to make without having to think about other things, you know. So it just helps you to create a, a smoother workflow in the sense that you can just make your videos without having to think about, uh, how much storage you have or how much storage you have left uh, on your device and are you going to run out of storage so and projects can take up a lot of space I do record on my iPhone so it's in the HEVC format it's quite a, a compressed format uh, it doesn't actually take up a lot of space um, so if I was actually recording on a Sony camera or something like that the files would be would be quite a lot bigger than the files are currently and 256 gigabytes would just not be enough so Guys, keep that in mind if you are recording on like a Sony camera or something like that. You know, don't get the base model. Maybe you spec it up to at least 512 gigabytes of storage. And then that would be, I think, that would be best for, for that type of workflow. Um, obviously, there are going to be exceptions uh, to this. There are going to people be people who... For 256 gigabytes will be enough for them because a lot of the work that they do is maybe uh, online they're using a lot of on online applications they're not actually using um, a lot of you know files they're not storing a lot of files on the mac mini uh, itself so for those type of people it, it might be absolutely fine and those people who you know use the the computer just for basic things just for web browsing listening to music for netflix and things like that for them also 256 gigabytes of storage uh, might absolutely be uh, fine so there are going to be exceptions to this but if you've got even you know a semi-professional workflow i would i would definitely recommend specking it up at least to 512 gigabytes of storage you can actually pick up some really good deals at the moment you can pick up this m4 mac mini with 512 gigabytes of storage for 689 pounds on amazon at the moment so that's a really good price. I think that's you know that's heavily discounted. Normally that's eight hundred dollars from Apple, <laughs> so you're getting it. I think that's even less than the Apple Education price too. So that's a really good deal to be had at the moment, and I would recommend purchasing that. Five twelve gigabytes of storage, sixteen gigabytes of unified memory. It's the sweet spot in my opinion. And as I mentioned in my nine month review, if I was to purchase this Mac Mini again, this would be the model I would pick up. So that's. Pretty much the only regret I have when purchasing this Mac Mini, but as I mentioned, I am making it work um, with an external SSD. It's absolutely fine. And even if you do buy the uh, the M4 Mac Mini with a 512 SSD, I still would recommend an external SSD just because you probably are still going to need that uh, external SSD to move your files over, but just not as frequent as if you had the base storage at 256 gigabytes of storage. So.
I think if you do things this way and you don't make this mistake which I've made, you'll have more of a smoother workflow, uh, especially if you're a YouTuber or if, if, as I mentioned, if you have a semi-professional workflow, it will help you out a lot. So guys, that's all I have for you in this video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it, it was helpful for you and you know, I hope it you know it influences your purchasing decision and makes you helps you make a better decision when buying this Mac Mini if you're thinking about buying it or even any Mac as I mentioned if you buy if you're buying a MacBook Air Pro it doesn't really matter um, because this storage decision is still gonna is still gonna affect you and uh, I, I would definitely recommend at least 512 gigabytes of storage which you get a standard in the in the MacBook Pro so that's not something you have to worry about if you're gonna pick that up or even the the Mac Studio but if you're picking up a MacBook Air then you know get that 512 SSD um, and and I think you won't regret it you'll uh, you'll you'll thank yourself later so guys that's it for this one uh, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and I'll see you in the next one take care guys bye